You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Okay, amazing. I'm here with Laurie Aikman and I'm really excited for this chat today, Laurie. Thank you so much for joining me on She's the Business. Yes, thank you for having me. That's okay. Now, Laurie is a functional health practitioner and I thought that this was a really good time of year to dive into the topic of burnout. Um, And this is something that Laurie absolutely knows and specializes in. And I think a lot of us, um, you know, I'm not the expert in this, so I'm completely just saying this off my own bat, but I think that there may be many of us who are entering into burnout or experiencing burnout and we don't even know. So I'm so keen to deep dive into this today with you, Laurie, and really understand like, what is it that we should be looking for? How do we know, like, if we're in burnout, you know, and we actually just got so used to this feeling that we're not feeling anymore? So before we unpack that, because I know I've just given you a lovely big can of worms to open up and dive into, but do you want to tell us a little bit about your business, uh, what it is that you actually do? Because I didn't describe it very well then, but um, share with us who you work with and what you do. That would be wonderful. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, Yes. I know as you were talking, I was like, oh yes, we'll dive into (laughs) all of this. Uh, But yes, I'm a, so my background is actually in nursing. I'm a nurse practitioner Mm -hmm. and I have a virtual practice um, where I use so functional medicine, functional health principles. And we're, we are the majority of the women that I work with, I like to call, you know, they're ambitious, they're driven. Um, many a lot of them are entrepreneurs. Sometimes they work in corporate, but they're usually mm. these high achieving women, right? That are often moms working a lot, you know, wearing many hats in their life. Mm. And because of that, I, they, you know, tend to, when they come to me and they're having symptoms of not feeling great, I usually have to explain to them that they are in a stage of burnout. Um, and, and that's the thing is we don't really realize it. Yeah. And I think burnout, I didn't even say the rest. So I, and I'm in Florida as well. I'm in the US. So I was like, I didn't talk about the rest of <laughs> I'm a mom as well. I'm a, I've got two little kids. Um, my husband works in the space industry. So he, uh, wow works there. Um, there's rockets, there's a space center nearby us. So that's oh, wow. where we live. If anybody is familiar with Florida. Yeah. But yeah, back to the burnout piece. And I can speak to this mm. totally, you know, from personal experience as well, all way, even before I became a mom, just as a high achieving woman and, you know, always working my, you know, very strong yeah. work ethic, let's get it done. And they tend to, you know, women tend to put everything else first, you know, especially if we're really passionate about what we're doing in our career, we're entrepreneur, right? That yes. the drive from being an entrepreneur, I think is just another level than <laughs> having, you know, just being an employee. And we all uh, thought that we were doing it to make life easier. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> have freedom. I'm going to have freedom, be an entrepreneur, right? Right, very. Um, But women tend to put themselves last Mm -hmm. and, uh, or put their self-care last. And because of that, they end up in this place of burnout. So, which is, you know, what is Yeah. So how did you, because I know that you, you know, you mentioned you've got personal experience in this because you've been through that yourself. Mm-hmm. No, and I'm very interested because I think I completely identify as the overachiever, high achiever. You know, I'm always thinking it's not good enough. I can be doing more and I've, I've got to be this like super mom and like a super coach and a super business owner and I've got to be everything to everyone. Um, I don't know where I get that from and that, that sort of mm-hmm. continual pressure really. And it's like mm-hmm. you want to you know, we want to be doing well. I think everybody wants to do well or we think that they're winning yeah. at life and at everything. So I get it. And I get that we have to give ourselves a little bit of grace and all of that, but it's hard when it's kind of inbuilt within you to be that yes. type of person, right? So tell yes. me about how you discovered your own burnout. What was it looking like? How did you recognize it in the first place and and move from that? I don't think in hindsight, looking back, I could see that I was in burnout. I, so background as a nurse practitioner, I worked in the ICU for 
Mm -hmm. 10, 11 years. So I worked, not only did I work a lot, but I worked odd shifts, you know, I worked Mm -hmm. night shift and day shift and weekends and, you know, kind of alternating. But same thing I can identify just always pushing, you know, like really working really hard at work, but then also exercising a lot and then yes. having to, you know, and, and being on a diet and this was before children and, and that sort of thing, but just that always striving for the next level. For me, there were, you know, sometimes issues with my weight, you know, gaining weight and not being able to lose weight, but there were also issues with having like my cycles, my menstrual, you know, my period menstrual cycles mm-hmm. being abnormal. And so if we talk about what, what, you know, cause I think a lot of people hear the term burnout and they think of, you know, I'm really burnt out at my job. I need to change my job. I need to quit. But when I talk about burnout with my clients, that, that could be a component, but it's really what's going on is our hormones have been depleted. And so we start to see these physical symptoms show up in our our body. And what has happened is that our always achieving, always pushing, basically there's a, our our fight or flight response, that part of our nervous system that tells us like, Mm -hmm. okay, I got to perform, you know, adrenaline fires, heart rate up, blood pressure up. The, The problem is, is that we are that fight or flight response is getting triggered a lot. It can be even just from things as simple as parenting, Um, (laughs) you know, especially if you're parenting, you know, at different stages, right? It's harder than normal. Or if if you have a child with special needs, or if you're a single parent, or, you know, we have all these other factors that make it more complicated. Then to speak to your audience, you're, you know, you're a business owner, you're worrying about, you know, your numbers and your employees or, or things like that. Or I like to explain to my clients that they're very in demand. It's not necessarily because I've had clients say, well, I, I like my life. I like what I'm doing, but it's that never giving yourself a break always. Okay. I got to do this. And then I got to do this. And then I got to do this. And I got to make sure I drop off the kids. And then I got to, you know, okay. Yeah. And I have meetings all day and mm-hmm. we, we never shift from, the opposite of fight or flight is then rest and digest, or uh, sometimes people call it breed and feed. It's to speak to the sciencey part. It's the parasympathetic nervous system in our body, or I'm sorry, it's the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic is rest and digest, and the sympathetic is the fight or flight. And mm-hmm. so, when mm-hmm. and we can literally shift back and forth between those two parts of our nervous system being fired, and what happens is us as these busy, high achieving women is we are spending most of our time in fight or flight. And we're getting very, not Mm -hmm. a lot of time, very, you know, little time in that rest and digest. And because of that, our, our hormones get depleted. So when the fight or flight response is triggered, our adrenal glands. So those are, you may have heard of a lot of people probably heard of the term adrenal fatigue. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it they don't they're getting away from using that phrase as much, but when the fight or flight response is, is triggered, the adrenal glands release the our stress hormone cortisol. Mm-hmm. Over time, our adrenal glands, you know, when they've been when they've been stimulated and stimulated and stimulated because we're stressed and we're stressed and we're stressed as our body's way of telling us to slow down, they stop putting out as much cortisol, Uh but they, they also stop putting out other hormones that uh, become our sex hormones. So things like estrogen and progesterone. So what I see a lot in women is they start having these hormonal symptoms like, you know, Mm. period problems, you know, menstrual cycle, mood swings, trouble sleeping, trouble with their weight. Uh, And it's this whole nervous system hormonal balance uh, that has gotten out of whack or thrown off. Yeah. Wow. There's so much in that. I was just, you know, thinking back, reflecting, and I think it creeps up on you slowly over time. You know, you you get a job as a younger person, you start working, you take on those things. You know, I've, I've always been active and always been doing things. And it's funny because you're like, 
I was always choosing the like high intensity interval training or the boot camps. Mm-hmm. It's like it had to be like hardcore as hard as possible yes. or it just wasn't enough. And, you know, like even when I was pregnant, making myself go to a Pilates studio, <laughs> and yeah. Pilates, I was at first thinking, well, this isn't going to be enough. And I was still lifting weights and things. And it's like, wow, it, there was a huge insight to, yeah, this yeah. always on, but then you have a baby mm-hmm. and then it's like, you just add that in, especially if you yes. go back to work. So now mm-hmm. you've got a child or children and you're dealing with all of them and you've got things that you need to do for them at different stages and ages. It's always different, but there's always mm-hmm. going to be something that you're doing. And then, but you're adding on top of that, your own exercise, your own, your work or your business and Mm-hmm. And it's like, when do we have that chance to rest? I think that's probably what anyone right. listening just now is thinking. Yeah, that all sounds like, well, great. I- but like, when? <laughs> when do yeah. I rest? Unless I'm sleeping. And then we're probably not having a great sleep because we're like so yes. stressed by the time we're going to bed. Um, mm-hmm. And I think you just feel like it. it's sort of normal. And I think I even almost took pride in being like a total ultra multitasker. I'm like, well, I can be, yes. you know, making lunch at the same time I'm emptying the dishwasher and I've got this happening. Mm -hmm. It's like I've got all these activities going on in the kitchen and I do the same in my business. My husband hates looking at my computer because they're like, how many tabs do you have open? I I know what all of them are and I'm working on them all at the same time. And, you know, (laughs) I I can relate. I can relate. Uh. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we are where we are. And that's really interesting to, you know, maybe you start to ask those questions around, well, what's actually showing up physiologically in our bodies, what's presenting and is there a link there that we thought maybe was just due to something else? And I have had a conversation with the doctor before and she was like, well, it's just getting older. You know, you just got to deal with the fact that you might have put on weight and not be going, you know, not be at what you would consider to be your normal weight. And that is the most frustrating thing to hear as someone, you know, I'm not expecting to be the same weight I was when I was 20, but I'm in my mid forties. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm being reasonable with what I expect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not being crazy or over. Yeah. Like, well, maybe I am. Exactly. But yeah. You know, it's that thing where you think they mm. don't often have the answers. So what do we do? Yes. Like if we are in this state where it's like, we're not burnt out. We ha- it hasn't got to the point where it's like medical intervention <laughs> because we're yeah. just sort of living life, but we're living life in this like, you know, wired state. And, you know, I think I could put up my hand and say, I I definitely have experienced it. Um, It's been good to, we traveled for eight months in the caravan. Fantastic. That was so good. And I, you know, there was a lot of time, there was no reception anywhere. So even if I wanted to work, couldn't, um, which was great. Right. But then coming back home, back into the house, back into activities and all of the things, it's felt very full on for the last few mm-hmm. weeks. Um, and so, you know, I don't want to get into that place where I'm like totally stressed out. So what can we do or what, do we, like, what is your advice? Where do you go from here once you start recognizing that this is what could be happening for you? Sure. Sure. There's, you brought up a couple points in your, in your talk. Sorry, I think, go back. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't leave that. I can't leave that. I think, Part of why we don't recognize, right? We're told it's a normal part of being a mom. Mm. It's a normal part of getting older, right? That's those are the things that our doctors are telling us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's just because, you know, I, I can speak to I've been on in both the what I would call the traditional or conventional medicine side. And now the way I choose to practice is more functional or holistic. But if you're going to a traditional or conventional medicine doctor, they're not trained to look at the body in this way. Yeah, they're trained to look for disease. And if and then, you know, prevent dis- they're not really trained to look at these deeper issues. And, and I think that eventually medicine will evolve to that. But that being said, I think also that's why women think it's just normal is because they're they're even if they do go to the doctor and say, Hey, I have these mm-hmm. symptoms they're there's pretty much dismissed and told, well, it's normal. You, you know, you shouldn't expect to feel any better. Um, w- yeah. which is really unfortunate because it's, it's just not true. 
um, you know, you really can, if, if we take a look at the hormones and see what's going on there, there are shifts that we can do to really like, that's something that my clients tell me. And I, and I really am so blessed that they get those results as they tell me, I didn't know I could feel this good yeah. because Amazing. they've been told <laughs> it's normal. You're a mom, you're getting older, but <laughs> so to speak to what do you do, right? What do you yeah. do? Um, really, if we look at the science at some point during the day, and, and ideally we get multiple points during the day where we're shifting from that fight or flight, go, go, go. And we're shifting to that other part of the nervous system, the rest and digest. So from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic. And there's a couple ways of of doing that. There's a lot of, it's funny, it actually came up. I was pulling up YouTube for some reason and probably because of the things I search. Uh, There was a YouTube video on the vagus nerve. So (laughs) the vagus nerve is is a big nerve that goes from our brainstem down through our gut. And a really great way. And the vagus nerve helps us go from that fight or flight to the rest and digest. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite ways, um, because I I find that it's most effective in my body, but to stimulate that vagus nerve and to shift my nervous system is, is using breath work, which is like, you know, a ver- there's many ways to do breath work. You know, there's Wim Hof, there's, I have a friend, um, a colleague that does pause breath work. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all different types of modalities, but, but a very active breath where, you know, your, your stomach is kind of being engaged. You're taking deeper breaths than normal is a really, really great way to, to move that nervous system from the fight or flight to the rest and digest. Mm. Um, so that is, that's, you know, one of my number ones, just because I find again, in that moment, I, I can, I can feel, I can feel like I'm at a, you know, a, a nine, a 10 some days, you know, and then when I do some breath work, then I'm, I'm down here, you know, I'm, I'm maybe I went down to a five. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can feel physically in my body, my heart rate slow down, my blood pressure lower after I've done some breath work. How, mm-hmm. how long do you think that takes? Like, are you stopping for mm-hmm. five minutes and doing breath work? Like, what do you see that you need to put in in order to experience that shift? Sure, sure. I think it, it comes with practice that, you know, you being able to shift comes with you being more aware of your body and able to do that. Uh, Most of the practitioners I know that use breath work, it's usually about a 20 minute session. A lot of times a recording, right? I have a recording that I love to use that I just turn it on. I listen to her, you know, tell me, breathe in and out, you know, whatever. I do the breath work and, and, and I, like I said, I feel a significant difference, which I think, you know, some people like 20 minutes, but I mean, how, if we look at our day, Mm. 20 minutes, a very small portion and, and that it can have such a profound impact on our body. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to ask you, I guess, is like, and maybe this is something we should have even touched on a little earlier. However, what happens if you don't address this? Like if we just continue yeah. in the state that mm-hmm. we're at, what actually happens? What is the reason why we should be going, well, hey, I need to prioritize a 20 minute yeah. mm-hmm. just breathing to bring my mm-hmm. nervous system back and regulate, um, you know, yeah, yeah dive into mm-hmm. it. Tell us what well, happens. even just if you think about the again, I, I'm my I love like looking at the science, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you just look at what's going on in your body when you're in fight or flight, and I love speaking to entrepreneurs about this. If you when you're in fight or flight, think you've got like your your brain your brain is is scattered, right? Your brain it's like you've got a, a lot of people describe it lizard brain. You know, your, your brain is, if you're survival. in fight or flight, yeah, if you're in, exactly, you're in survival mode. So if we think mm-hmm. back to our, you know, our ancestors that were like literally fighting or fleeing, you know, they had animal predators when, you know, people lived in the wild. I mean, it was literally a survival. I have mm-hmm. to, you know, I'm, I'm so, but that same nervous system is what's triggered in us. So we're just trying to figure out how to survive. 
Uh, mm -hmm. If you are an entrepreneur, especially if, you know, I think too, in any kind of whatever field you're in, I think I'm not in a very creative field, but I still have to be creative in, in, you know, how am I going to do this different with my clients? How can I think about this differently? If I'm in survival mode, it's really hard for me to slow down and, and be a more effective leader. You know, I think in the way Mm -hmm. I, I personally think it, it's effective in business or, you know, we help get results when we're not yeah. in panic mode all the time, mm -hmm. right? We're not in survival. Mode. And two, we're going to enjoy life more when we can slow yeah. down and those happy brain chemicals, you know, get yeah. triggered and then we're more creative and then the solution comes to us. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I but that, I mean that is just immediate, you know. Yeah, like your you've your brain has no ability to um, tune into any logic when you're stressed because you're in that like <gasps> panic. You know, it's a panic state, even though you might not feel like you're panicking, but that means that you're very reactionary and you're doing things on that surface yes. level. And I would see it as you know where you feel like you could sit down and maybe do something that you're familiar with because it's like, all I have to do is follow these steps and I can cope with doing that. But if someone sat down and said, okay, let's look at your strategy or something that required your brain yeah. to go big picture. And if you're like, holy mo, I just can't even get into that place where I can think about it. That's very mm -hmm. stressful thinking about it. It's probably actually because you're already in that stress state, right? Like I can yeah. definitely see the different areas of your brain and, and, the creativity, yes, because you need to, you're, you're actually in creation mode needing to think and that's not happening if you're in shutdown, lizard brain survival, like you're actually just doing what you need to do to get the next step. Like you're not going, well, how about we plan a different way to get there because that would make way much more sense. Your brain's yes. not able to do that when you're there. So, yeah, that is actually an amazing benefit to think not even just for your own body but just you know what is the sort of state that you're in right now in running your mm -hmm. business day to day are you running it from a lizard brain <laughs> exactly or, you know, exactly survival mode and and that often uh -huh. probably means that you're making some decisions based on that like from that very narrow minded one step ahead view and you're not actually able to kind of sit with it and and really be a bit more forward thinking, strategic, creative, even with how you're running your business. Um, so yes, that's a massive one. That's actually, you know, enormous. And I think that we probably, you know, as women, we, and I'm sure most people listening to the podcast, we're entrepreneurs, we are the type of people who are achievers. We're like, we haven't started exactly, it because exactly. we're not. We started it because we've got a vision. And that probably means that you, you know, you also then look at your own health and yourself. And I would say they've probably got equal weight of like how important that is to you as well. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And so do you see what else might happen if we, if we don't, fix it if we kind of end up staying yeah. in the state like how long can humans actually exist and survive in it um before yeah. something else happens yeah and and so if we look yeah though the you know we talked about the immediate if mm. the if this stuff persists you know we we stay in this state um a lot of times when my clients come to me and we look at their life, I'm thinking of one client in particular, and she's an entrepreneur as well. When we looked back, I mean, it had been a period of four to five years where, you know, she had, and she had, and this is what a lot of, you know, it's life. She had had a death in her family. She changed before she became an entrepreneur. She had lost a job, was in the middle of a pregnancy you know, a family member passed away. I mean, just a lot of very stressful things that were keeping her in survival mode. And she was newly in entrepreneurship when, when we were working together. Um, and so how it showed up for her was that she was another goal of hers was to have another child and she was struggling to get pregnant mm, Yeah, because right. So those, the, I talked about the cortisol then affecting, you know, the sex hormones, 
Mm. So then that's how it showed up in her was that she was struggling to get pregnant. But um, other ways it's going to show up in the body is, is uh, it can be lowered immune system. So you're, you're getting sick a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be getting injured a lot, especially if you're right, you're like this working out person, even if you're not working out, you know, you're just, you can be more prone to injury. What I find too, a uh, big one, I always hear people want more energy, right? They feel tired, they feel fatigued, and then they struggle to lose weight. Um, I would say across the board, all of my clients tell me that when they're in that state. And the reason a big reason why that happens is, is because, so the cortisol levels have gotten out of whack. First they go high and then eventually they can go low. But what, what, what cortisol does is cortisol actually raises your blood sugar and causes inflammation in the body as well. So a common theme I see in all of my clients is that their blood sugar is high and their insulin levels are high which then contributes to that weight gain, contributes to inflammation. And inflammation can show up in so many ways, you know, aches and pains, headaches. I mean, just, you know, inflammation creates buildup in the arteries of the heart, which can lead to heart disease. Um, You know, inflammation can contribute. So that would be high cholesterol also, high blood pressure. I mean, so when... When these things are going unchecked long term, they're leading to chronic illnesses that people end up going on medication for, you know, um, you, you know, blood pressure medication, diabetes medication, cholesterol medication, uh, medication for pain, um, you know, people that um, I think of a friend of mine that's in a very, you know, she's a VP in a company, a very large company. I mean, travels the world, very busy, you know, and I think she has a hard time sleeping unless she's, you know, t- can take medication. Um, and I, I like, as her friend, I sit there and go like, oh my God, you're just so stressed. You need like less stress, you know, in your life. But, but I mean, that's how that stress then is really hurting our body. Yeah. yeah. It can show up in different ways in that, in, in different people. But, um, those are some of the big signs that, that things, you know, are off brain fog. That's another one for women, um, yes. because, of, you, you know, n- not having a hard time remembering things. I know that was something that showed up for me and that can be partly to the effect on the sex hormones. So lower progesterone levels, sometimes lower estrogen levels because of, so it's almost like looking, a woman might even look like she's in early menopause because of the adrenals being so taxed and having a low cortisol output. Yeah. Wow. (sighs) There's just so much there. And and I think that, you know, we could get into this place of feeling really overwhelmed because we're like, oh my God, yes. I think like I'm probably doing all of those things and I've probably got yeah. inflammation and what's it actually doing inside? Um, so if anyone's listening right now, if we're starting to hear you, we're really um, hearing you, we're seeing ourselves and a lot of yes. what we've been talking about, what do you want to say to us so that we don't then uh, stress ourselves out? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, oh my God, I have to panic now. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. So, I mean, and, and I think of, you know, like many people say in business, you know, it's following the breadcrumbs. So it's like, okay, you're hearing this and light bulbs are turning on and you're going, I think this might be me. I think I might have a problem with some of this. I like to say the number one, because part of it is, you know, nourishing your body. And and so nutrition, movement, Mm -hmm. things like that are huge. But if you are still, even if you're living the healthiest lifestyle, as far as eating healthy and exercising, if you have massive amounts of stress in your life, that's still going to be, you're, you're, that's still going to be the number one thing that that's creating all those things in your, you know, those um, Mm -hmm. problems in your body. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I would try breath work, you know, or try journaling, try doing something every making time every day where you can, you know, it's easy for me to say shift, you know, shift your nervous system, but, but think about, is there something that you can do where you get lost in the moment? 
I mm. always think of the quote, Brene Brown. I don't know. Are you familiar with Brene Brown? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So she talks about, it really is, is having, having fun. Like when something that you do where you, so, I mean, maybe you like decide to take an art class that you love, or you decide to take a dance class, or you just yeah. try to go for a walk or you download an app um, that teaches you how to do breath work, or you watch a YouTube video that, you know, takes you through a five minute breath. My, my son at their preschool, they do these five minute yoga videos and they do a little deep breathing in the video. Yes. Uh, so something, you know, mm. just start doing something every day and really making it a priority that's going to help you. And you're going to know in the moment, like the more that you're getting mm. aware of your body, the mind is going to be racing, racing, racing. And then you're just that whatever it is that allows you to kind of drop into your body. Yeah. You know, and, and get out of that panic mode. I mean, I think that is huge. Yeah. That is huge. I think that's so such a great um, point uh, to make is choose something that feels fun to you because it's going to be different, right, for all of us. And Mm -hmm. when you said that, I was like, well, that is so true because I think we can get so caught up in, well, what's the right thing to do? What's the best thing to do? We're always looking for the right, Mm -hmm. the best. I mean, we do it all the time in business. I I love to kind of help people say like there is no one best. It is literally Mm -hmm. what is the right one for you Well, and only you are actually going to ever know that. So start with something fun, try it. Um, you know, and I'm going to take my own advice <laughs> because I, I was sitting there thinking, gosh, well, when I used to do yoga classes, you know, you're getting a bit of exercise and you breathe, you have to breathe because it's all about breathing. So you're actually doing breath work, exercise. And at the end you have like little relaxation and I, you would yeah. almost yeah. Feel asleep sometimes. I'm like, I actually did get deeply relaxed in that class. So yes. if you are like me and you're like one of these people who's always multitasking, you're like, well, I can't take the time off because of that. Think about how many benefits there is in that one activity. Yes. It's exercise, it's breath work, it's also mm-hmm. relaxation, and it's time for you. It's like actually yeah. you go, well, you know what? I give myself to everybody else, to my kids, to my clients, to my husband, my family, whatever, whoever it is that you're giving all, all your time to you still have you to look after. And so what if it was just a 20 minute or half an hour that you said, I'm going to do yoga in my lounge room for 20 minutes or half an hour. You don't even have to have a gym. And you give that as a gift to yourself if that feels like fun for you. But, you know, I kind of like think about the activity that you choose and like how many boxes is it ticking for you? Because I think that that might be a thing that could really help you to make the time because it's like, well, actually, this Mm -hmm. isn't a waste of time. It's not taking you away from anything. You're achieving many things in doing this one activity. And so that could be a fun way to think about, well, what are the benefits you get from it? Um, Because... Like you say, it's it's hard, and and I think for you know for us as business owners, we're probably always thinking, well, yes, I know I should go and do that, you know, twenty minute or thirty minute yoga class, but I've got this to do and that to do, and I think that Laura, you probably will have something to say about this, but I kind of come from it from the perspective of the rest is actually part of the work and you will achieve more if you give yourself a little bit of time. You know, how often have you sat there battling with something like, oh my God, the Facebook pixel or whatever it is (laughs) that you're battling with. You're like, why is this so hard? And then if you have dropped it and gone away and come back, you've probably managed to nail it in like 10, 20 minutes, like go to bed, sleep on it, get up in the morning. You're like, oh, it wasn't that hard after all. It's like, well, Exactly. Just overstressed, overtired, and your brain wasn't working. So you're making it hard for yourself. Um, And so anytime we're in that place, I think that actually just walking away from whatever it is that we're doing and and having that little moment, choose your activity. I love that you shared that with us today. So yeah, tell us what you think about that. What would you add to add to that, like what tips do you have in? Yes. Yes. I think, yeah, the point you brought up was great. Of, of, and, and I can attest to that too. I know I've, when I've gone to a yoga class or gone for a walk, you know, then like this idea just pops in my head the one yes. I, rather than when I'm sitting there at the computer going, 
oh no, this isn't right. How do I do it? You know, and I'm forcing <laughs> it. And then I go take a break and it, then exactly that when you're out of that panic mode, then, then that's when the creativity comes. Yeah. Um, some other just basics is need to make sure that you're, you're hydrating, you're drinking plenty of water. Um, you know, so I don't, you're right. You metrics. So you guys would be like a liter, two liters. I would say like two liters of water a day. I know mm-hmm. we, a lot of times go by, you know, we go by ounces in the U S but, yeah. um, at least, I'm trying to think what it would be. I always tell my clients at least 80 ounces of water a day. I have no say. idea, but that. Two liters sounds like that would be a decent amount. So a normal, I've got my uh, sports bottle here. This would be probably 750 mils, so almost a liter. Okay, yes, it would be two. Okay, 80 ounces is 2.3 liters. I had to look it up real quick just to see. Okay. Yeah, so hydrating. Mm. If you, if your brain is very sensitive to dehydration. So Mm -hmm. if you're dehydrated, your brain, your, your, that's when it, you know, Again, you're not going to be thinking, you're not going to be as sharp as you want to be in your business uh-huh. when you're not taking care of your body. So hydrating, another one I spoke to earlier, I find that the majority of my clients, their blood sugar and their insulin levels have uh, been affected because of that stress hormone cortisol. Yeah. Um, so a big thing I do with my clients is make sure that they're eating a really you know, healthy, balanced diet, which a lot of times for women is increasing the amount of protein that they're eating. I find most women don't eat enough protein. Mm -hmm. Um, So a good rule of thumb was like 20 to 30. Again, I'm thinking uh, 20 to 30 grams of protein um, per meal. And, Mm -hmm. And what this does is it slows down your digestion and helps keep your blood sugar from going as high. It's going to help to make your blood sugar more stable. Yeah. So often when we're often when we're, especially if we're eating carbohydrates, um, not with, without a lot of protein, our blood sugar can go up and come down and that can really affect our focus, our concentration, our energy levels. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. just from a practical standpoint, eating more protein, drinking more water, um, and getting sleep, you know, sleep really is so important. And when we, when we are, aren't sleeping enough, then again, it's going to be so much easier for us to get in that fight, that fight or flight mode, right? Survival mode triggered, um, which I know is tough because I have really small, I, um, my kids are a two and a half and a little bit over a year old. So we're, I'm like, finally to the stage where everybody's (laughs) sleeping through the night. So I know that sleep can't always be controlled for some people, but if you, you know, figuring out how to get more sleep, um, you know, maybe staying up, finishing work late at night, you know, isn't the, you know, the I most ideal in getting some rest and coming back to it with fresh eyes in the morning. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Really just allow you to be more productive too. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, what is it that we're really working on? Is it something absolutely essential or is it something that we're kind of giving ourselves these goals or, milestones or deadlines that we've actually given to ourselves because guess who the boss is <laughs> you yes. know? like and is that actually moving the needle you know I find exactly. um, you know people who've come out of a role where we were an employee we might have mm-hmm. had things that we had to do and so you know we create our to-do list and to-do list in a business will never be gone they will always be enormous you can always find more things to put on them and I think that a lot of the time it's hard to shift from that place where people might have finished their day's work and signed off at the end of the day to like running a business where the work is never done. So you actually just have to choose. Now is the time to turn off and go and do something for myself or whatever it is because that list will be there. It will still be there tomorrow. And, you know, really often I think the question I often ask is like, are you doing the things that are shifting the needle or are you doing things yeah. just to be tidy or whatever? And it's not that being tidy is bad, but it's like you're sacrificing this time for your overall health just because of something little here that really actually shouldn't matter. So yes. what, what is the priority really? What priority are yeah. we giving to things? Um which can potentially help because I think maybe we can find pockets of time that we're using for things that aren't necessarily um, the most important things. And why are we doing them in the first place? Is it because someone said, 
you have to post on social media, you know, three times a day and you're doing it because they said so instead of it's like, no, I've actually got a strategy that I've put in place and I've figured out this is when I need to post because of these reasons. Like I'd say 99% of people are not there. They're actually doing it because someone else has said that they have to. (laughs) So, you know, we can kind of turn that mirror on and reflect to ourselves, where are we spending our time on things that not having a significant impact on our business. Mm -hmm. You know, what if you drop it to one time a day? What is it going to change anything? Uh, Get that time back for yourself. Um, Anyway, I love to kind of challenge, (laughs) challenge the rules and the status quo, you know, just sort of see what we're doing. What is it that you're actually doing and why? Um, Because it can be very easy to get blindfolded to it. Um, you know, have the blinkers on or sort of doing this <laughs> with my yes, hands yes. on the video. Um, but, you know, you get really blinkered because of being told things and thinking, well, I've got to do whatever I was told um, mm-hmm. instead of, you know, really, I guess, taking our own responsibility. And like you say, knowing your own body because mm-hmm. it's we are the best ones to know that, I guess, are we? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. I have a coach uh, who has said um, like that are the revenue generating activities, right? Is what you're doing actually going to make you money in your business? I mean, not that every, obviously there are things that have to be done that may not be, but can it be delegated out if it's a low value task? Can it be delegated out to a VA or, Mm -hmm. you know, someone she's also said, sometimes we're doing, uh, we're, in motion rather than action. We're doing Mm -hmm. things that make us feel like we're productive, Mm -hmm. but they're not, like you said, they're not actually moving the needle in the business. Yes. And yeah, I I think that, like you said, if you've been an employee, right. And you're used to, okay, well, I have to do these things. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And it's so funny because we will have a deadline and people will be stressed out about this, I've got to get it done. I'm like, and what will happen if you don't? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Who is going to be, you know, how are you going to get in trouble? Because then they're thinking, well, hang on, I'm the boss. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's my exactly. I've given to myself and guess what happens if I don't meet it? Well, nothing actually, unless you choose to. Yes. But it's it's funny because we're, we're so conditioned to that way of being um, mm-hmm. 100%. And I, th- I think it would liken it to, thinking, well, am I running on a treadmill right now or am I actually running along a road? And if you're running on a treadmill, it means you're expending all of this energy and you're doing lots of activity, which might feel like, yeah, I'm really winning because I've got all this done today, but you're not going anywhere. You're actually just stationary, (laughs) expending energy. That's such a great analogy, yes. Yeah, amazing. We want to be putting our energy in the right places. So, um, Laurie, I know that energy and helping people to feel like they have more energy is something that you're very passionate about and you have a lot of resources for. So I'd invite you to share with us if you have anything that you would like to invite people to um, learn from you or to um, reach out for. Sure, sure. Yes, I um, I do have a like a jump start guide for more. Like I said, those are the two biggest complaints I hear. Is so when you're speaking to entrepreneurs, maybe a lot of them online. So I have a lead magnet for <laughs> for energy, and I have a lead magnet for weight loss. Um, but yes, uh, if you go to laurieaikman.com forward slash energy, um, mm-hmm. it's a jump start guide for, you know, to have more energy. And I, I take you through a lot of the things that I explained today. Um, you know, I'm taking you through and helping you understand, you know, I find for me, I find if I understand how it's affecting my body, it mm. makes it easier for me to, you know, shift my habits rather than, oh, someone told me I need to drink water. So I need to drink more water. Um, you know, Mm. if you're understanding how it's really affecting your body and how you want to feel. So I do kind of explain some of these things again, um, and then give you action steps that you can do. And, and I, I mean, these are things that I do with my clients and usually like within a week, you know, we, we chat, you know, we have a call and then a week later we have a call and they're like, Oh my gosh, I feel, you know, it, it's amazing just doing some of these basic things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and a lot of it is things we know to do, but because we're not focusing on ourselves, right. We're focusing on everything else. 
uh, then those habits aren't happening. So yeah. And what I love about it as well is I feel like it's very relevant advice because so much of what you read on the internet is like there is no shortage of health advice on the internet. You can yeah. <laughs> read it and for your entire life and you'll probably still never read everything that's out there. But um, you know, I've kind of got to that point in my life now where I'm like, I don't want the generic stuff that's out there just for humans or the stuff that was actually written for men and has been based mm-hmm. on studies for men because yeah. guess what? I'm a woman in my 40s and it's not the same. It is not the same advice for me as it would be for my husband. And I don't want that advice. I actually want what is really relevant and pertinent to me because I don't want to waste my time with all this other stuff that that doesn't work. And Exactly. And I think that there's, you know, so much that's kind of coming out about that now. And, you know, I follow a couple of people who are talking, you know, they're like, women, we we need advice that is specific yes. and we, and even sure. to life stage as well. Like, you know, now is mm-hmm. not the same as when I was 20. It's uh, my yes. body needs different things and it's got different things happening. So the fact that you're talking about hormones, how it impacts you know, the stress, all of the things that are happening once we're in this stage of life, that is, I think, something to, you know, to be very aware of. Like, where are we getting advice from? Are we taking Mm -hmm. advice from, you know, like my my brother-in-law loves to come and give us health advice (laughs) all the time. (laughs) He's right into it. And I'm always like, "Mm, okay, I I listen to what he says. And I think, well, I'm going to do my own research because that's probably what works for you and you are not me. (laughs) Um, Yes. So, yeah. It's it's really great that you've put this together and, and that it's something from your professional and personal experience. And I feel like it's so relevant to to us um, being the you know our humans as women, as women that are you know, yes. you know that sort of stage of life as well. So yes. thank you for that. And what about if they want to kind of check in with you on social media or follow you along? Yeah. Do you have any favorite platform that you tend to hang out on? Yes, I probably am um, most active on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just at Lori Aikman. It's just my name. It's L-O-R-I-A-I-K-M-A-N. And that, you know, it cross posts to Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, I'm on there. Um, I've dabbled with TikTok a little bit, but I've <laughs> not been consistent. I'm most consistent on Instagram. And then my website is just, you know, LoriAikman.com too. I've mentioned awesome. before, but I do, I do work with uh, clients one-on-one. Um, and then I also have a group uh, program too, but when I'm working with clients uh, in one on one, we're looking at their labs. You know, we're looking at so I'm talking. There's a lot of things that everyone needs, and that's what we're able to do through the group coaching. And then if somebody's like, okay, I've done all those things, and I need a little bit, you know, more, then mm-hmm. we can look at testing your, you know, testing your hormones and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, cause it, and I would say you mentioned it, the majority of my clients are, I would say 35 to 45, you know, they're moms. I'm being, I'm a mom in that age range too. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Um, I'll be 40 next year. I'm like, can't believe it's right around the corner. Uh, (laughs) but, but it is being a mom has felt totally different in my body than before I became Mm -hmm. a mom. Yeah. Um, and then yes, getting that, that right around 40 for most women, some women, it can happen as early as 35, but we start, we edge into that perimenopause. So about 10 years mm. before we go through menopause, not only if we take aside the burnout piece, we talked about just because of the stage of life, our hormones start to change as well. And yeah, things are just different. And what works for men doesn't work for us because of you know, our bodies are, are unique and dynamic in that way. So. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. good. Uh, there's just, I, I feel like there's so much we could talk about, but I think this has oh, been yes. really great. <laughs> awesome um, conversation to have today. And um, thank you for shining the light on, on some things that may have, you know, helped some people to think, oh, wow, there could be an answer in that that I just wasn't seeing or didn't know. And so I appreciate Mm -hmm. you coming and sharing with us. Um, Thank you so much for your time. And, um, yeah, we'll definitely want to continue this conversation, I think, and um, learn a bit more about it. Yes, thank you so much. I would just, as you said, anyone who's listening to this, I would say 
if you have, if your gut, if your intuition is telling you that there's something off in your body, listen to that. Even if a doctor is telling you, mm. you know, one or another, yeah. um, you know, so many women are are dismissed, unfortunately, in the medical system until they find, till finally they find somebody who can give them an accurate diagnosis. So trust your gut and advocate for yourself. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. And um, thanks for joining us today on She's a Business. Thank you. Thank you.